Many games can be boiled down to a series of decisions for the player to make, dressed as different gameplay styles and artistic styles. This is similar to saying that most music is little more than interfacing with a musical instrument to produce sounds within a relative time period, which is too deeply deconstructed to be fair to the practices of both music and video game production. But Beholder occupies this type of space. While some games allow the player to explore many options when confronted with a decision, Beholder has reduced this to a binary process and has been dressed in a way that hopes the player won't notice. Warm Lamp games have removed the how and replaced it with will. A play will feature small scenery elements to set the mood for the events, but since it is a stage production, they cannot be too large or too detailed, and the audience must suspend their disbelief in quite an extreme way to become immersed. Video games, much like films, have more options to generate immersion and it can be quite easy to forget that the Polygon Man doesn't really exist. With effective implementation of engaging controls or dramatic narrative situations, a video game can surpass even the most immersive films. However, the opposite can also be true. While minimalism isn't immediately bad design, there are some necessary inclusions for a game to be more than simply turning switches on and off. A narrative or polished and enthralling mechanics are vital for creating a quality experience. God of War is a Marvel movie to Beholder's Churchill. Beholder has art and music. There's a very minor plot, and the setting is charming in its misery, but it doesn't make the sequences of decisions disappear into the background. While no UI pieces are explicitly bars that must be filled, the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is exclusively collecting resources until a bar fills up, and then cashing it in. Failure to fill the bar in time causes one of the failure events to occur. This is always apparent, and while everything functions as expected, the gameplay experience is more akin to watching gears turn inside a clock and trying to locate the mechanism that counts the hours. The player must collect money in order to proceed through certain scenarios. To do this, the player will wait for a tenant to leave their apartment, so the player may rifle through the tenant's belongings to create a profile of them. The player gets a sum of money when the profile is logged. If the tenant possesses illegal items, so long as they aren't unemployed, the player can send a letter to the tenant to have their silence purchased. Very few scenarios are resolved without looking through tenant's stuff, and the process of looking through their things is simply to walk into their apartment, select an object with an inventory, click on all of the items. If the item shows red text, then click the text. Move on to the next object. Collect resource from resource node. Transport resource to another location. Get paid so that the collection of resources can continue. Video games. Before I became jaded to the gameplay, I found it to be quite challenging. I wanted to be a good landlord and treat my tenants well, but this resulted in a lot of impossible tasks and my entire family died as a result. If the player's money goes into the negative, it is an immediate game over. Some quests are simply incompatible, so there is certainly no way to do the right thing. And even if the player wanted to be good to the tenants, Kyle is still going to say some strange things to the women in his life that makes his positive efforts for them seem creepy. For my second attempt, I decided to wring as much money out of my tenants as possible. I would blackmail them, rob them, and profile them as frequently as possible. I even called the police on Carl's son, Patrick, because I knew he'd be killed later and having him arrested would earn money, while letting him die costs a large sum. This strategy was extremely effective, and I managed to complete the game with very little effort. Playing this way ruined everything about my initial impressions of Beholder. The tenants were no longer people. They were useful until I could no longer extract money from them at which point I had them arrested. The revolutionary plot became absurdly easy to manage alongside Carl's duties to the state. With so much money flowing in, I was totally capable of doing anything the ministry asked of me without much difficulty. Choices were removed. My first attempt offered a few risky choices that almost immediately caused a failure. So my second attempt simply didn't do that thing again. Beholder offers the player a number of options throughout the game Carl's primary objective 
is to remain as the landlord of the building, so he must adhere to the demands of the government. They will occasionally call and offer a quest for the player to complete. These quests are mandatory, since the player will be fined for failing, and having too little money is the only way to lose. Sometimes, a group of revolutionaries will appear on the street, or call the phone. They offer quests that run counter to the objective of the government, and often involve taking enormous risk for very little benefit. If Carl is discovered to be working with the revolutionaries, he will be arrested and the player will lose. I found it was possible to have positive interactions with the revolutionaries without completing their most dangerous tasks. Many of the choices relating to the revolution will cause Carl to get into more trouble, so these are almost always non-options. Other events can occur and the majority of them have very little impact on Carl's activities. A lottery winner moves in and Carl is pressured to have him invest his winnings into a suspicious business. Whether the player goes through with this has no consequence. A tenant can be evicted in a convoluted way that might end up being a positive outcome for the tenant. Or they can be arrested. Having them arrested is easier, safer, and earns the player money. Another non-option. The player will be asked for ridiculous sums of money throughout the early portions of the game. It is possible to pay off one of these initial charges, but the other two will always go unpaid. Unless the tenants are willing to allow all of their belongings to be stolen without contacting the police, I cannot think of a way to ever pay more than one of these charges. And saving Carl's daughter is undoubtedly the best option. Just another symptom of the prevailing weakness throughout Beholder. The game's polish is also a weak point. There weren't game-breaking bugs, and the game never crashed, but there were persistent issues with the presentation. Quests typically have a timer associated with them, to set a deadline as to when they can be completed. Some quests do not have these timers, but the tenant can be arrested or move away before the quest is completed. The quest will then remain in the quest log indefinitely because of this. Moreover, when sending a profile to law enforcement, the police tab will light up as though a new notification had been received. This happened whether the profile had errors in it or not, so I would constantly second guess whether I had completed a profile correctly. Warm Lamp Games is a Russian studio, but it seems they didn't have a native English speaker check through the text and voiceovers for any mistakes. I found a number of errors within the text and voice actors would often skip words in sentences or make grammatical errors as they spoke, as if they weren't reading from a script. Remember, our foes are continually plotting against us. Thankfully, our great leader effortlessly disperses the waves of terror. Audio mixing is also a regular problem. The game's general ambience and music is reasonably quiet, but the crowd of people that run by, or the propaganda wagon that show up, are overly loud. Also, when reporting law breakages, the note requires the legal code that has been breached, as well as the date the law was written. The menu that displays all of the government directives scrolls awfully slowly, and I couldn't find a way to make it scroll any faster. There are also very few music tracks, but fortunately the game isn't particularly long. I spent just over six hours with the game, and I was quite done with it when it ended. The additional endings aren't a strong enough draw for me to return nor is the DLC. Beholder is as rudimentary as modern video games could be. It has mechanics, art, and goals. It doesn't do anything particularly well, but it hasn't done anything especially poorly to be noteworthy. It doesn't strive to be anything great. There's no attempt at something artistically magnificent. The Void was bleak and amateurish, but it had a vision and it wanted to impress. I would have probably forgotten about Beholder if I hadn't made this video.
Next, I'll be investigating a rough diamond, a hidden gem that oozes soul as it aims to throw the player high into the sky. Stick around. <laughs> 